Alrighty, uh, welcome to Pokemon One's uh, guide to speedrunning Postal One, also known as Postal Ninety Seven, also known as the Better Postal. I'm your host, Mark Blevins. Now, um, just right off the bat, time starts when the screen right here disappears and you gain control of the Postal Dude right here. That's when the time starts. Uh, if you want to stay consistent with the splits that we already have, split times, then uh, the split changes for the level when you uh, hit F1 at the end of the level, you know, causing the uh, screen to go to the next opening screen, right? Now, uh, I'm just going to be showing you the... Uh, the pathways that we use, or at least I use for most levels, uh, you don't have to use these pathways. If you think y there's a pathway that will work better for you, maybe quicker for you, then by all means go for it. But, you know, I'm just giving you what I use. So we're just going to restart here by killing myself. Oh, oh, first off, I should definitely teach you this trick before we start going into pathways. Now, uh, there's, there's a couple things you're going to need to know when it comes to combat. First off, the shotgun. Now, the shotgun can either be your best friend or your worst nightmare, right? Now, that was an example of a good shotgun kill, right? Two hits, straight to the face. Dead, right? However, let me show you an example of a bad shotgun kill. Wait, that didn't work. See, I did damage to that police using a different gun. I hit him with one bullet from the machine gun, and it went from two hits to three hits. It can get a lot worse if you, you know. Okay. See how long that took? Granted, I missed one of those hits, but that's not important. See? Three to four hits. What you gotta do is you gotta make sure you hit him twice and at point blank range. Now, it's gonna take forever for any enemies that aren't the standard brown cops you see right next to me. Or the standard blue cops that you see curling on the ground right now. For any other enemy, it's going to take more than two hits. And really not that practical. Especially with, like, rocket guys. It's really only useful for brown cops and blue cops. So, yeah, just make sure when using it to hit them twice. Both. Don't miss. Don't hit, attack them with anything else beforehand. Just pop them in the head with the shotgun twice. And that's pretty much the only use you can have for the shotgun. Other than that, it's pretty uh, useless. Another trick. Grenades. Now, grenades can be used in situations where you don't have ammo for m other tactics. Because the thing about the grenade is you got to set it up and... It's very hard to use when enemies are moving, but it's great for when enemies aren't moving. So, for instance, let me just go through this level how I usually would. That was bad. Give me a sec here. Okay, this is how I usually would do this level. Ah, oh, damn it. See, that would be a restart there, because I missed that grenade. Oh, 
but you see how useful the grenade is. The grenade, in some cases, can be as useful as the Molotov. Not more, though, because the Molotov is the ultimate useful weapon in this game. When in doubt, use the Molotov. The Molotov is your friend. Because fire does very little damage to you, but a lot of damage to everyone else. Once an enemy is on fire, they can no longer be on fire until they're dead. They're basically pseudo-killed. Like, they can't attack you, and they will die in, like, five seconds. There's no way to for an enemy to survive being set on fire. It's a death sentence, right? And what you can do is, you can use enemies that are already on fire to set yourself on fire. So you can do what I like to call chaining the flame. Where you can use one Molotov, but have it last for a very long time. Some some cases, you can chain a flame for an entire level. Which is what I'm doing here right now. I don't usually do this, but it is possible. See how far I can go with this. Can I finish the level using just one Molotov? Uh, I failed that time because I had to, I'd use, thank God, an enemy threw a Molotov, even though that went out before I could find anyone else. But you get you get what I'm saying, right? Like, for instance, in the Easy Mart, on the first level of the Special Delivery DLC, the tactic is to chain two Molotovs, one thrown at the beginning of the level, one thrown halfway through the level, for the entire level, and you can, get the, you can beat the level in, like, 40 seconds, right? Now... The shotgun, the grenade, and the molotov are going to be your workhorses for the first half of the game, right? So let me just go through home right now just to give you a good... And, and let me actually do it right this time. I... I... <laughs> that guy... Got that guy... I was going to take him out with the molotov, but, uh, I mean, you know, whatever... Some, sometimes enemies will just take out themselves for you, and that can be really handy. It's very important you learn how long it takes for a Molotov for fire to go out on your persons, right? The exact amount of time it takes for... Because you, you, you want to stay on fire, right? See, now I'm at 100%. I just beat the level, right? That's the path I take for home, in most cases. And then you press F1, and we're on to the next level. Truck stop. Now, at the beginning of truck stop, they give you a shotgun, even though... We don't pick it up in home. You can, but we don't. But they give it to you at the beginning of Truck Stop, just in case. And we use it for the first few guys. Oh, I got him. I didn't think I got him. Now, you're going to have to learn to adapt to the enemy's positions, because they can get pretty random when it comes to where they're moving. So, you're going to, you know, there's not always going to be a 100% Seth path, you know. Shotgun these two. Throw a grenade over here for good measure. Now you're going to want... Ammo management is very important in this speedrun. Because you do not want to run out of ammo. For important weapons like the rocket launcher. And you want to always make sure you have enough molotovs and... Shotgun ammo and stuff like that. You never want to, like, be limited by your 
what weapons you do and don't have ammo for because that's that's when you start losing time that's when you stop being optimized right you have to get very used with being on fire in this game I feel like this speedrun would be twice as long if it wasn't for the uh, ability to set yourself on fire, right? Now, we just got the rocket launcher in the bottom left corner of this map. And this is the workhorse weapon for the rest of the game. It is the most important gun you will ever get. Because, while there are better weapons like the auto shotgun or... Uh, the flamethrower, we don't get, uh, we don't see the flamethrower until halfway through the game, or a little bit before it, and we don't get much ammo for it, it's very sparse, and we don't see the auto shotgun until, like, three levels till the end, right? But the rocket launcher, we just got, it's level three, and there's lots of ammo for it, so that's definitely the workhorse weapon of the game, if there had to be any one. Now... It's tradition for me to set the uh, marching band on fire whenever I do this level. No, just cause. Out of common courtesy, right? Sometimes a good combination if you're using the... Uh, if you're trying to use the shotgun on enemies that won't die from two hits to it, is to hit them a few times with the uh, shotgun. And then uh, just machine gun down the rest of them. Sometimes that can be a little faster than just shotgunning them non-stop. You know, experiment with it a little bit. See what works best for you. This level is mostly just getting grenades and mollies. It's going to be a while until we can 100% depend on the uh, rocket launcher. So for now, we're just going to have to stick with the... Shotgunning. Damn it. There we go. Now, as you can see, I'm, I'm doing pretty shit right now. Because, uh... I haven't played this game in months, actually. But... You can see the, 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 the specific path I'm taking right now. The bridge. Now, the bridge can be a pain if you don't know what you're doing. It's the first uh, top-down level of the game. There's, like, three of them. Usually what I do is I go up top first and then work my way down, but right there I, I kind of didn't do that for some reason. Oh, I ran out of shotgun ammo. When you have giant crowds of enemies, it's good practice to just set yourself on fire and just get all of them, you know, enclosed space and all that. I don't have ammo for much things right now, so I'm going to chain the flame just to, you know, conserve ammo. Oh, and 
Remember, you don't have to kill all the enemies. You just have to kill the amount of enemies required to proceed. It's a good idea to, like, keep your eye on the percentage counter. So that you know the very moment you can leave the level. Because if you, you know, if you don't leave the level the moment you're allowed to, you're just wasting time, right? Now, this level, uh, it's pretty enclosed. So, it's very easy to take out the enemies one, by t one at a time, you know? They don't have much room to run around and, and, you know, mess with you, so. Yeah. I don't really know how to explain that any better. All right, um, I accidentally, what I'm supposed to do, I, uh, I took out this guy right here early, which isn't really the most optimal because you can just do it while you're up here, but I wasn't thinking ahead. I forgot my route. Always remember your route, kids. Now, the junkyard is important, because this is the first time you can get the flamethrower. Now, if you're a moron, you'll use it immediately, but that's not what you want to do, because you want to save it for the important levels, for the later on levels. Because the f flamethrower is the best weapon in the game. It's a portable Molotov that you don't have to stand around and lob. You can just run around and just flame everyone in sight. And you don't have to stop for anyone. And yeah. Uh, we get a little bit of flame ammo right here. But the flamethrower is behind this fence right here. I actually didn't know about this until a few months after I started speedrunning. Uh, Shark Gang Manhunt was actually the one to uh, discover this. I'm sure he's not the first person to ever discover that that flamethrower was there, but he was the first to bring it to m me. So, thank you for that. About now is when you get a pretty healthy amount of uh, rockets. Mother, mm. Oh, also, important thing to note, uh, there's two types of rockets, of course. There's the normal rocket, and then there's the heat-sinking rocket. Now, the heat-sinking rocket will go towards enemies, so in some cases that can be useful when, you know, you want to get an enemy around a corner, or an enemy's running, and, you know, you don't want to compensate, aim for him. However, it will also go towards fire. And, if there's an enemy nearby, but you're trying to hit, like, a turret, for example, you'll we'll see turns later on, it, it will just go, it will just not go towards the turret, right? So you gotta be mindful of that. I'm kind of being really bad right now. Again, I'm very rusty, but you can see the general idea of when I. Yeah, I, I just, I just, I just use a bit of flame just to, you know, 
get rid of that mess. So yeah, that, that was that was an example of the flamethrower. The flamethrower is amazing. Because you can just clear everything in sight instantly. But again, you want to be very careful with it. Now, a tactic... <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, a tactic that Epica, another postal speedrunner, uh, found out is that if you tap the flamethrower very, very quickly, you can conserve ammo while still having the devastating effect of the flamethrower. For instance, uh, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to waste a little bit of flamethrower ammo to, to show you the old method of using the flamethrower, which was, you know, just to hold it down, right? But that wastes a lot of ammo, which you can do instead, and, you know, the smart way to do it is just to tap it for every enemy you see. So you only use one point of ammo instead of, you know, wasting it, making the giant big flames. That, see, that would have been a great case to use the homing rocket. You gotta... A big part of the speedrun is knowing which weapon to use in which scenario, depending on what ammo you have, you know. Th this is the first time you get the flamethrower normally, non-secret. This is when I, I used to get it, my old speedruns, before I found out about it in the uh, trailer park. Not the trailer park, the construction site. No, wait, not that's not... What is that place? I forget the name of it. You know what I mean, right? The place I showed you earlier. I didn't need to throw that Molotov because that guy threw one at me anyways. See right there, that uh, brown cop, It took he took like five hits because I, uh, I didn't hit him immediately after the first time. Some Someone got in my way and I wasn't able to hit him a second time instantly, causing him to like take five hits, right? I think the farm is like the quickest level in the game. Very quick level. Couldn't get the flame there. Okay, this is a construction site. <laughs> Forgot the name of the other place. Now, this is a good level to uh, use your flame for. At least I think it is, you know. Again, you can choose when to use your flame and when not to use your flame, depending on what you feel like is the best time to. Or you can space it out and, you know, use it once every few, you know, enemies consistently that that's a good idea you know you want to be conservative or you can just you know save it up till the end of the game and just you know breeze through it that's what i used to do
See, the shotgun's very impractical for anyone other than the lowest of the low enemies. I took all that time trying to get that flame back, only to not use it. And I just wasted a rocket there. Who did I miss? Oh, that's weird. I missed someone. There you are. See, the ghetto is where stuff starts getting serious, and the city is a progression of that. Now, we almost never use the Napalm Launcher. The Napalm Launcher is basically a slightly faster, slightly more powerful Molotov. And the reason I never use it is because there's no scenario where I feel like it's better to use a Napalm Launcher than a Molotov. A Molotov usually gets the job done, and Napalm Launcher really doesn't do any much better than that. Now, we just picked up the Auto Shotgun, which is a very important weapon in the game. Which is It's a shotgun, but with the firing uh, speed of a machine gun. Now, of course, as you can imagine, it chews through ammo like there's no tomorrow, right? But also chews through enemies like there's no tomorrow. So, very useful weapon, just, no, use it in moderation. It basically replaces the shotgun for the rest of the game. <sighs> yeah, that, in case you haven't noticed, yeah, those are the turrets, they're not fun. This turn always drops a lot of health, I have no idea why. You see, since we're playing on easy one, the absolute easiest skill in the game, you don't really have to worry about dying. It's very, you know, you have to play, be playing very bad in order to die on easy one. So that's not really something you should have to concern yourselves with. Don't really have to worry about, you know, dodging enemy attacks and all that nonsense. You know, that's, that's mostly for, you know, the higher levels, you know playing casually on normal skills like you should if you ever play this game casually. This guy always has- this This is the only guy with a flamethrower in the entire game. The only enemy with a flamethrower. There are turrets with flamethrowers in like Super Postal, but that's the only like human enemy with a flamethrower. It doesn't even really hold it. It just spits out fire.
industrial complex. This one can really suck if you uh, don't know what you're doing or if you just mess up. Now, the thing about this level is that it requires 90% of the enemies to be killed. And that doesn't mean 90% of the enemies in the entire level, but that means 90% of the enemies that have spawned in. Which means that, like, if enemies were to spawn in, your kill percentage would lower, because there's now more enemies that have spawned in, meaning you have killed a lower percentage. So, there's these things I like to call enemy closets, where if you go near them, it'll activate a... Uh, it's just a bunch of enemies start pouring out of it, right? There's not too many in the game. However, the ones that there are, you want to avoid them as much as possible. Because there are some that are very devious that'll... You, you could just avoid otherwise and not have to kill the enemies. Or, if you do spawn them, you're going to probably have to kill them in order to get back to the percentage you had before you killed them. Now, this is the first level where enemy colossus can really screw you over if you don't know what you're doing. You see... There's a bunch of enemy closets on the other side of this fence, right? And usually you would go over and, you know, kill them. However, if you kill all the enemies on this side, you won't have to worry about going over there. Saving a lot of time. Now, I'm going to go over there just to show an example, right? This is enemy closet. That's, see, my, my percentage is going down. Now I can't leave the level. And now i got to kill all these enemies if I want to leave the level. And it's a big time waster because they just pour out non-stop. It seems like infinite, but it's not. And you get a bunch of crawlers. Oh, I forgot to explain crawlers. Um, so basically, when you kill an enemy, there's a there, like about half the time they don't actually die immediately. They go what's in like in this crawling phase, right? This one's in a crawling phase right here, where he's not considered dead by the percentage counter. And it takes like 10 seconds before he dies on his own after going into the crawl phase. Or you can, of course, execute them, but that takes time. So in an ideal world, all enemies would go down and die instantly, but that just doesn't happen, right? So if you, you'll want to execute crawling enemies if you're like at the end of the level. Like those are the last enemies you need dead. But if you're at like the beginning of a level and you get crawlers, you don't really have to worry about them crawling because they'll be dead by the time you're near the end of the level, right? You know what I'm saying? Hopefully. Air Force Base! Best level in the game. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because it's the last level in the game. That, and also this ammo box right here. 40 flamethrower ammo. We are now gods among men. Now sometimes I'll go up top to the top of the level first. Sometimes I'll go to the bottom of the level first. It, it really doesn't matter. This... This level is more of a playground for me, you know, an enjoyable way to finish a speed run, because it just gives you so much ammo, and you can just have fun and not worry about ammo conservation at all. All the rockets and all the flame ammo you could possibly want, it's paradise. Now, you're going to want to stay away from that center area, for the most part, because there is a crap ton of enemy closets in the center area. You want to work around the level, right? There's a turn inside of this helicopter for some reason. Also, there's an ostrich. I, I ran right into that rocket. I thought I was going to be able to dodge it, but I just didn't. Sometimes you can get these two turns to kill each other. Oh, come on. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Ah! You guys are no fun. See, the problem is there's a couple enemies in the center that are already spawned in. 
basically forcing you to go near the enemy closets if you want to finish the level. A practice that will later be abused in Super Postal, but that's not what we're here to talk about right now. We're talking about just the main campaign. See, we're at 83%, but we've basically already taken out all the enemies that are around. And we just have to, you know, start taking out these bastards. Now, ideally, if you want to work as optimally as possible, you're not going to want to flamethrower enemies at the end of a level. Because even though the flamethrower is easier to use, the rocket launcher technically kills enemies faster, right? Because they're hit, they go down, they don't crawl. Rocket launchers don't create crawlers. Shotguns create crawlers. Flamethrower sometimes creates crawlers. Rocket launcher doesn't create crawlers, right? So if you want to be the absolute fastest, in, like in the more optimized routes, like for instance, special delivery, you want to use the rocket launcher near the end instead of the flamethrower just to get a couple seconds over it, right? Now, I'm purposely going near the enemy closets in the center. You don't have to do that, but that's what I used to do, right? And a bunch of guys come out, and they just set themselves on fire, and yeah. Fun for the whole family. And bam. That's when the timer stops right there, when you hit F1 in the Air Force Base. Speed runs over. Elementary school, everyone's favorite uh, level. Yeah. So, that's a very, very rough and dirty explanation. Very basic Explanation of the Postal 1, any percent speed run for the main campaign. Uh, I just kind of, you know, made this and I'm pushing it out because, you know, someone in the Discord asked if there was one. And uh, I hope in the future to make a much better text version or maybe a better video version. But if I were to make a text version, it'd be like, you know, a lot more detailed, a lot more intricate, a lot more, you know, not bad like this is. And also, you know, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can always message me on Discord, Steam, uh, video response on YouTube. Can you still do that? I don't know. Just, please, if you have any questions whatsoever, don't be afraid to ask. More than happy to answer your questions. So, yeah. Uh, hope this helps. If this helps even one person speedrun postal, I'll be happy. All right? Thanks. I'm out here.